So at this point, we're familiar with the three ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent, and we're happy using them to find missing sides in right angle triangles. What we're going to do now is look at how to find missing angles in right angle triangles. So just a quick recap. When we've got a right angle triangle, which we show with the little square in the right angle, an angle that we either know or want to find, we label the sides, the longest side opposite the right angle, is the hypotenuse. The side opposite the angle that's marked is called the opposite side and the side next to the angle that's marked is called the adjacent side. The three formulae that you need to remember are sine, which we just shortened to sin, which is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse side. Cosine, which we just shortened to cos, which is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse side and tangent, which we shortened to tan, which is the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So these are the three formulae you need to be quite happy with using. And you can either remember them as formulae, you can remember them as formula triangles, or you can do what I do, which is use the mnemonic Sokotoa. Any of those three ways will be fine, but this is the way I'm going to be using throughout my examples. So uh, let's take ourselves a question. Here I have a triangle. It's right angled. I know that this side is 28 centimeters. I know that this side is 16 centimeters. And I want to find this angle here. So first thing we do with any trigonometric question is we label our sides. So x is my angle, which means that 16 is opposite x. And 28 is the hypotenuse. Now I choose a formula, write out Sokotoa, and then you can either underline or highlight. Um, the hypotenuse is H, so those two there, and the opposite is O. So what I'm using is, so I'm going to use the sine formula. So you just write the for sine formula out to make sure you get it correct. Sometimes this is worth a marking exam, so always worth it. Right, now we put our numbers in, that's, a, that's the next step. Um, sine is the function. The angle is x. We don't know what it is, but we do know it's called x. The opposite side is 16, and the hypotenuse side is 28. At this point, you can sometimes simplify this fraction, which I can do here, but you don't need to do that. In the same way, you can also calculate that as a decimal, but you don't need to do that. Now we want to know what x is. Currently, we don't know what x is, we know what sine x is. So we need to remove the function of sine. And to remove a function, we do the inverse function. The inverse of sine is sine inverse. I bet you couldn't see that one coming. And it's found on your calculator by pressing shift and sine. It's recorded on paper as using sine with a little negative one. So it looks like sine to the power of minus one, like so. And then in brackets, we're, what are we doing? We're doing sine inverse to the opposite side, which is its fraction, 4 over 7, or 16 over 28. Remember what I said, you don't have to simplify it. And that's where we use our calculator. We've rearranged, now we use our calculator. Shift and sine gives you the inverse sine there. And then you can either do this as a divide or as a fraction. So I'm going to do this one as a fraction, 4 over 7. Don't forget to finish off with the bracket, equals... And I end up with my answer, 34.8. Let's round that to 35 degrees. So let's quickly remind, remind ourselves of the steps. I labelled my triangle. I chose my formula. I put my numbers in. I rearranged and I used my calculator. Let's have a look at another example. So here is another right angle triangle. Um, this is my angle X, this is 18 centimetres, and this is 22 centimetres. So, first step, label. 22 is the hypotenuse. Opposite the angle is nothing, so we're not, we're not fussed about that, we're going to ignore that. And this side here is the adjacent side. Now I choose a formula. 
Toa, formula triangles, whatever you want, H for the hypotenuse, and A for the adjacent. We're using K, we're going to use cos. So let's write that formula out. Because we need to remember that cos equals the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. It's really important that we get those sides the right way round. Um, so now we put our numbers in. Cos x, because x is our angle, the adjacent is 18, and the hypotenuse is 22. Finally, well nearly finally, we rearrange. We don't want cos x, we just want x. So to get the inverse of cos, we press on our calculator shift cos, and on paper we write cos with a little negative 1 of this amount here. Now, I haven't simplified it this time because like I said it's not really necessary. So this time I'm going to do it as a divide. So it's 18 divided by 22. That's really useful if your calculator doesn't have a fraction button. It's also fewer button presses. Um, the same. And that also gives me 35 degrees. Obviously 35 is the angle to be around here. Now it's really important that you get these two the right way around. If you've got these two the wrong way around in angles, it does helpfully tell you. Because if I put my fraction the opposite way around, if I use a reciprocal fraction, it tells me I've made a math error. That means I'm asking it to do something that's impossible. Um, you don't get that with the sides, but if you do get math error on your calculator, then it might mean you've got your fraction the wrong way around. I'm going to do one more example um, using tan, just because otherwise we haven't seen one with tan on it yet, um, for a little while. So here I have a triangle. This side here is 62 centimetres. This side here is 32 centimetres. That's a right angle, and this is my angle X that I want to find. So I label my sides. This is my opposite side. This is my adjacent side. This is the hypotenuse, but I really don't care because it's got no information on it. When I use Sokotoa, I've got O for my opposite, A for my adjacent, which means I'm using tan. Let's write that formula out. Tan theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. That's complete not right. Well then, uh, tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. Okay, there's me, my mind um, drifting somewhat. Um, so let's put the numbers in. Tan x equals the opposite side, which is 62, over the adjacent side, which is 32. Now with a tan um, triangle, it doesn't matter um, whether the top or the bottom is uh, larger the numerator or the denominator is larger. So with a tan triangle, it might not give you math error, but it might still be wrong. Um, anyway, so we want to remove the function of tan. We're going to use tan inverse. And we're going to write that as tan with a little power, negative, negative 1 power of my fraction, which is 62 over 32. And that's where I use my calculator. And that gives me 62.7 degrees, which is 63 degrees to the nearest degree. So, method, same as before. We label the sides of our triangle. We choose a formula. We put the numbers into the formula. We rearrange, and then we calculate.